Hi, I'm Emily from the product support team here at Tapestry and in this video I'm going to talk you through all of the different things that you might need to do on your Tapestry account when you transition between different academic years. So in this video we're going to look at downloading data from your account, deleting children, staff and relatives, transferring children between different Tapestry accounts and finally adding new children and organising them. To do any of these things, you will need to be logged in as a manager on Tapestry and you'll need to do this from the browser version as well, which is from tapestryjournal.com. Just a note before we get started as well, that in the description box we'll link below all of the tutorials that will talk you through the exact processes that I'm going to show you now as well in a bit more depth. Before removing any children from your account, you'll need to make sure that you and the parents have downloaded any data for them that you want. So that's what we're going to look at first in this video. On Tapestry, you can export children's learning journals both individually and in bulk. And you can also export zip files which include all of their photos and videos. To do these things, you will need to go to the control panel. So I'm going to click on my name in the top right hand corner and select control panel from the drop down. Once we're on the control panel, we just need to go to the manage children page on the left hand side menu. Now that we're on the manage children page, we can see a list of all the children on the account. To export a learning journal for an individual child or a zip file which includes all of their photos and videos, you just need to click on the cog button at the end of the row of their name and then either select export journal to PDF or bulk export media depending on what you want to do. You can also complete these actions in bulk just by selecting the tick boxes from the end of the row of the children's names. You can also select all of your children at once and to do this you'll need to scroll to the bottom of the page and where it says 20 per page click on that drop down and then select all. Now that you can see all children on one page at the top you'll see an option that says select items and from there you just need to click all. And now all of the children that we have on our account are selected. Once you select the tick boxes, you'll notice that there's a pop-up box in the bottom right hand corner. You just need to click on that drop down and there you'll see again the options to export their journals as PDFs and also to bulk export their photos and videos. I'm just going to select the export journals as PDFs option for now and then press go. I'm not going to talk you through all of the different options on this export page as you can check out our video specifically on downloading journals to PDFs for that, but one of the options that I will point your attention to is the recipient at the top. Now this is really important if you want relatives to be able to download the children's learning journals as you'll need to select relatives from the drop down. Then underneath this you'll see the tick box allow recipient to download. If you want them to be able to download the journal straight away, do make sure that's ticked. You might see this yellow box underneath and this just means that these children don't have any relatives linked. If you do have that show up, you might want to fix that before you go and export the journals. Once you've set all of your different options on this page, you just need to click submit. Once you've done that, you can see that they've now been queued and you can either go back to the Manage Children page or you can go to your Downloads page. I'll just click to go to the Downloads page. Here we can see that the files are now being generated and as soon as they have been, we'll be able to download them. The process for exporting children's zip files of photos and videos is exactly the same as what we've just done now and there is a separate video that you can watch for this which we'll link in the description box. The only thing that's not included in children's learning journals when you export them is their All About Me's. So if you filled these in and want to export them you just need to go to the children tab at the top of the page. Once you're on the children page you just need to find the child's name in the list that you want to export their About Me page for, click on their name and select About Me from the drop down. Once you're on this page, 
To export it, you just need to click on the export button and then you'll get that as a PDF. As well as this, you may want to export some of the assessment screens to save those. To do that, you just need to go to the tracking section, find the relevant framework and the assessment screen that you want to export. So in this case, I'm gonna choose the summative assessment group view one. And then if we scroll down, you'll see at the top that there are the options to export this as a CSV or a PDF. Now you can't export all assessment screens from Tapestry as a CSV, but you can export them all as a PDF. Now that we've downloaded any data for the children, let's have a look at transferring them between different Tapestry accounts. You may need to transfer children between different Tapestry accounts if they're going to another setting that also uses Tapestry, or if you have multiple Tapestry accounts for different year groups and you want to move them up between those. So to do this, we again need to go to the control panel. So I'm going to click on my name in the top right hand corner and select control panel from the drop down. Once we're on the control panel, we just need to go to the transfer children page. So here, if you're sending children to a different setting, you'll need to click on the send children to another setting button. Once you do that, you can select the children and what you want included in the transfer. Doing this will then generate a transfer name and a transfer key, which you can give to the receiving setting. So if we go back to the transfer children page, and we scroll down, we can see that here are some other transfers taking place on the account. So if I click on one of these, you'll see this is what the transfer name and the transfer key looks like. As these are quite long, it's normally best if you copy and paste them into an email to the other setting just to make sure there aren't any mistakes. If we go back to the transfer children page, now we can see what happens if you are the setting receiving the children. So you've got the transfer name and the transfer key. So you just need to copy and paste those into the transfer name and transfer key boxes and then click claim transfer. Once the transfer has been started and the transfer name and key have been entered into the receiving setting, there are a couple of back and forths between each setting that you'll need to do to approve the children and make sure that all the correct data is being sent across. Once that's been done, you can just sit back and wait for Tapestry to complete the transfer for you. Once the transfer has been completed, the children will be added to the receiving setting as enrolling, and they will then need to activate them. We'll come back to enrolling children when we look at adding new children onto an account. It is important to note with transfers that what happens is duplicate accounts are created for the children that are being transferred and that's what's sent across to the receiving setting. So this means that the children will remain in the sending setting, so they will then need to go and delete them. So now let's have a look at deleting children, staff and relatives on your account. To delete children, staff and relatives on your account, you'll need to stay on the control panel and then select the appropriate manage children, manage relatives or manage staff page from the left hand side menu, depending on what user type you're trying to delete. For this example, I'll just use manage children. On this page, you'll see all the children or staff or relatives, depending on what page you're on, on your account. To delete an individual one, you just need to click on the cog button at the end of the row of their name and then select the option to delete. It's also possible to delete children, staff and relatives in bulk and to do this you just need to select the tick boxes from the end of the row of their name. Now if you're removing all children, staff or relatives on your account, the easiest way to do this is as we did with the PDF journals, go to the bottom of the page and select to see all children. And then at the top where it says select items, click all from the drop down. So now once again, we've got all children selected on our account. 
So from the pop-up box in the bottom right hand corner, you just need to select the option to delete and then press go. Once you do this for any children, staff or relatives, you'll then be asked to confirm this. And once you do so, they'll be moved into an awaiting deletion state. Now they'll stay in this state for 90 days on your account. So during this time, children will not contribute to your list of active children and staff and relatives won't be able to log in. It does mean that you can restore them though. So if there are any mistakes, don't worry as you can do this simply by going to the relevant page, finding the child like I've got here with Abby, clicking on the cog button and selecting to make them active again. Once you've deleted children, staff and relatives from your account, you can then look at setting up the new children. So to add new children, you'll need to be on the Manage Children page of the control panel, and we're already on that. So you can add children either individually or in bulk via CSV file. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do it individually, but if you did have a CSV file and you wanted to upload them in bulk, you just need to scroll to the bottom of the Manage Children page and select your file and click to upload it there. But as we're doing this individually, we'll need to be at the top of the page and click on the Add Child button. So on this page is where you can input all of the details for the child, but the only information that you will need to add in order to save them is their first name, last name, and also their date of birth. If we scroll down the page, you'll see in the status section, the default is active, but if we click on the drop down, you'll see that you can either add a child as active or enrolling. If you add a child as active, they will automatically count to the number of active children on your account. And you'll also be able to use all of the different functionality on Tapestry with them. If you add a child as enrolling, they won't contribute to the number of active children on your account, and you'll only be able to complete certain functionality with them. For example, you can only add them to groups, assign them to staff as key children, link them to relatives, print name labels for them, or complete their All About Me. Well, if you add a child as enrolling, you can activate them at any point from the Manage Children page. To do this, do make sure to check out our video on making enrolling children active. So once you've inputted all of the information that you want for the child, just remember to press save at the bottom. So once you've added new children to your account, you'll then need to have a look at organising them. You may need to do this if you have children remaining on your account as well between academic years. So the first thing that we're going to look at when organising children on your account is separating them into groups. So to do this, I'm going to go to the Manage Groups page on the control panel. Here you can see all of the groups that you've already got set up on your account. If you want to add or remove children to an existing group, you just need to click on the Edit Children button. If you want to change the name of a group, for example, if all the children are staying together, but the group is going to be called something different, click on the Edit Details button. Finally, if you want to add a completely brand new group, click on the Add Group button. Here you'll need to give a name for the group, a description if you wish, and then you can select children and press save. So the other thing that you might need to look at when organising children on your account is assigning them as key children to staff. To do this, you'll need to go to the Manage Staff page. To check which key children are assigned to staff and add or remove any, you just need to click on the Manage Key Children button at the top of the Manage Staff page. Here you'll see a list of all of your staff members and to add new key children to them or remove any, click on the Edit Relationships button. To remove any key children, you can just untick their names. And to add new key children, 
just tick the names of the new children and when you're done, press done. And now you see those key children have been updated for that member of staff. So those are all of the different things that you might need to do on your Tapestry account when you transition between academic years. In this video, we've looked at downloading data, transferring children between different Tapestry accounts, deleting children, staff and relatives, as well as adding new children and organising them on your account. I hope you found this video helpful.